Today we're going to talk about budgets for systems. Specifically, we're going to talk about power budgets and mass budgets and the importance of both. So we're going to start off talking about basically the importance of power uh, and why you need power in a system. Well, sort of obvious, any type of electronic system needs some form of power, and that can be provided by with a battery or solar power or wind power or an RTG or whatever form uh, you want. If the source of power is not consistent, so for example, it is solar or wind, which basically you lose power every once in a while because it's nighttime or the wind dies down or whatever, then you need a way to store energy. So you need some sort of a battery power or something like that to actually um, store that energy and allow you to go through the time when you don't actually have readily available power typically need different voltages for different components in a power system so you need something like a 28 volt uh, rail a 12 volt rail a 5 volt rail and a 3.3 volt rail so you need some way to split those powers um, and there's some sort of tolerance usually on the allowed voltage for example like if you need a 3.3 volt rail then you can't have like 3.5 volts or you know 2.7 volts those are outside of the limits and typically that is because like on a specification sheet it will tell you like you need 3.3 plus or minus 0.1 volts or something like that and so you need to have your power system so that builds in that tolerance and that just makes things a little bit more complicated and you need some sort of a filtering of um, noise in the line how much power do you actually need? So this is the point of this whole lecture is basically figuring out um, how to figure out how much power you need. So you need to create a spreadsheet uh, which lists all of your electronic components that you're going to have. And you do this uh, by basically listing like the name of the component, the voltage that it needs, and the voltage is, is important because you want to keep track of which lines things are on. If you have a bunch of 5 volt components and 3.3 volt components, you want to make sure you understand which ones are 5 volts and which ones are 3.3. So it's basically like a bookkeeping thing. Uh, the current is usually specified on the data sheet for um, a component, and so you can get a list of that. You multiply those two things, the voltage and current, together to get you the power. And then you have this thing called duty cycle. So typically we think of things when we turn them on, they just run continuously. But that's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be true. So for example, a radio, you're not going to have a radio that runs com all the time. You're going to have a radio that may turn on and operate for a couple of seconds or a minute and sends data back and then turns off for a while because radios tend to be really high uh, power units and so you don't want them to run continuously. You may do things like that for like GPS. So for example, if you're um, operating something that's trying to keep track of where a car is or something then you know your gps may be running all the time while the car is moving but then when the car stops moving you could just basically ignore the gps or turn off the gps for a while and then you know once the car starts moving again then the gps comes back on so you have some sort of an estimate of the duty cycle how often this thing is running and then you multiply those things together to give you the total power that you need. We'll talk about contingency in a little bit. And then you make a grand total of the power. Uh, and then you add them all together. You basically need to size a battery from this. And so you need to determine how long you're going to run these things. And that gives you an indication of how much total energy you're going to actually need. So then let's do the same thing for mass. So often in a system, mass is constrained. So you can't have an infinite mass because, for example, rockets can only take so much to space. Uh, they have limitations on how much mass they can take to what altitude or to Mars or to the moon or whatever. Um, and so you need to make a budget to keep track of exactly how much you want to take.
car fuel efficiency and performance is limited by mass so you can't have like a porsche that weighs you know 10,000 kilograms uh because like it won't perform uh so you want to make things as light as possible make cars as light as possible to increase their fuel efficiency and then robot um, their speed and agility are limited by mass also and so you tend to want to make robots uh, lighter so you need to make sure that all the mass is accounted for and the total mass is not exceeded you have some sort of a budget and so you want to keep track of all of the masses and this is gives you a similar spreadsheet to power they're very similar to each other sometimes they're actually included in the same spreadsheet um, but just in different columns so you can get as detailed as you want in the budget. You can go down to like every screw and every bolt and you know every resistor, or you can sum the different subsystems and basically just say like the attitude determination and control subsystem is three kilograms or something like that. But people tend to go um, to individual components. So like wheels and um, star trackers or um, batteries or whatever and they don't go to like nuts and bolts or anything like that and that all really depends on your goals um, of your system so if you have somebody who is really uh, wants to keep track of every nut and bolt then you have a very very detailed uh, spreadsheet but if you have a systems engineer or whatever who basically just wants to trust other engineers to keep track of of different things on their own then you may you know just keep track of the different subsystems or the sum of the different subsystems all right so here is an example of a power spreadsheet uh, a power budget spreadsheet um, so like I said before you list your different components over here uh, you have the voltages the current uh, the power uh, duty cycle, total power, contingency, and grand total. And then once you combine all of these, we'll go through them in an example spreadsheet in a little bit. Um, once you have this total here, then you add them all up to give you a sum. You estimate how long you want the thing to run. So for example, two hours. And then you multiply these two numbers together to give you basically the battery capacity that you need to make this thing run. Uh, you compare that to the battery capacity of the battery that you have decided to use in the system, and you can see that the battery capacity here, 4,000 milliwatt hours, is larger than 3,000 milliwatt hours, so it's actually pretty okay. You do a comparison with those to get you your margin, which is this formula here, and you can see that we have a battery that is about 32% um, larger than what we absolutely 100% have to have. And so that gives us a little bit of margin in the system. So if somebody comes to you and says like, oh, we need a little bit more power because we underestimated blah, 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 or we want to add another uh, component onto this, you can basically say, well, all right, we have 32% margin, so we can give them a little bit more power. Contingency is this thing here. Contingency is on individual components. So let's say that your sensor, you have a scientist or something like that who invented some sort of a sensor and they're basically using it for the first time. Then you don't really know the total power that that sensor is going to use. And so you could put a lot of contingency on it and um, basically allow them to have a little use a little bit more power than what they say here all right uh, but let's say that you actually have this gps that's off the shelf so an off the shelf gps you know has been tested over and over and over thousands and thousands of people have used it and so they know pretty much exactly how much power it going it's going to use so you may only give it a very very small amount of contingency say five percent uh, so there's a difference between the contingency, which is on individual components, and it's really a classification of how much uncertainty you have in the component, um, versus margin, which is on the system level. 
All right, so contingency compensates for uncertainty in the power requirements or in the requirements for a specific component. If you don't have very much um, certainty in the component, you give it a large contingency, say 30%. If you have a lot of faith in that component, then you give it a smaller contingency, say 5%. Uh, and margin compensates for overall design. Um, so if somebody comes to you and says that they want some extra thing. Let's look at an actual spreadsheet. Do, 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 do. All right, so this is a spreadsheet that's available in the link below. Um, and I have both a power budget and a mass budget in this. So you can download this and then open it in Excel or upload it to um, Google Sheets or Google Drive and then click on it and then you can open it with Google Sheets or something like that. And then you'll get something that looks just like this. So this power budget looks exactly like the power budget in the, um, in the uh, presentation. And you could see that we have different sensors, GPS, radio, and uh, it gives you the different voltage, current, power, blah, blah, blah. And the beautiful thing about this spreadsheet is that you can change things dynamically. Let's say that the margin is about 32%. But let's say that um, your power engineer comes back to you and says, oh, the, um, the GPS, we totally uh, goofed on this GPS and this is the wrong GPS for us. Like it just won't do what we need it to do. We need to get GPS, a different GPS. And that different GPS is four times as much power. So instead of using uh, 50 milliwatt or milliamps of current, it uses um, 200 milliamps of uh, current. So then the beautiful thing is that you can then go through, and you don't need to do all the math on your on your own. Uh, the spreadsheet does the math for you. So instead of 0.05 amps, you can put in 0.2 amps. And then you can see how that changes the system automatically. It updates all of these different cells for you, um, and then it recomputes the margin immediately for you. And you can see that if you switch to that GPS, now your margin is negative, which is bad um, because you basically have no more power left so you can tell your engineer like no we can't do that because um, you've exceeded the the um, margin so let's go back to that gps uh, so we're back to 32 percent margin but then let's say somebody else comes up to you and says, well, this sensor doesn't do exactly what we want. We want another sensor. So we need, you know, sensor number two. Uh, so you can add in sensor two, for example. And sensor two has, um, let's say that it is going to be on the five volt line also. Dun, 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 dun. And that is going to use 0.1 amps also. And then what we want to do is we want to copy all of these formulas uh, from above. So you basically click on the cell, you copy it, you click on it, you paste. Uh, let's say the duty cycle is going to be 100% uh, percent, do, 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 percent. So we copy and paste. Mm, the contingency for this one, let's say that this is a pretty okay-ish um, center. And then we copy and paste. And then that changes the formulas also, or that changes the total also. Okay, so here um, your engineer came to you and said, uh, we need to add sensor, another sensor onto the system. Sorry about that, but you know, we absolutely have to have it. Now you can see that the margin changed <laughs> uh, to negative again. And so you have to go back to your engineer and say like, well, we just can't do that. Um, we just don't have the power to do that. 
And so you either need to have, you know, uh, something with less current, less power, or you need to maybe make a duty cycle here. Okay, so you can go back to your engineer and say like, okay, uh, you can have this sensor, but let's say that you can only run this sensor at, so for example, 10% of the time. And um, you could see that now um, you actually have 27 0.7% margin, which is lower than 30% margin, but that's what margin is for. Like you're going to use that margin um, as you build the system, um, and you just don't want that margin as you're building the system to get below zero. When you're doing the planning and everything, you want it to be close to 30%, but as you're building it, that's the whole point of having it is to use it. All right, now let's look at the mass budget. Mass budget looks very similar, except that you don't have things like duty cycle and everything because there's no duty cycle in mass. You basically list all of your different components here. And you list the mass here, uh, the number of items. So let's say, for example, you have two sensor ones. Well, we didn't actually have two sensor ones in our power budget. Uh, but let's pretend that we have them in the mass budget or something. You can list the number of items that you have. And this is like if you get down into screws and nuts and bolts or things like that, then you need to include the number of items. And then you have the total mass, the contingency, the grand total. You have the grand total down here. Uh, you have a total mass budget allocation. So somebody's going to tell you you cannot exceed this much mass. And then you can create margin exactly the same way you did with the power budget. Uh, and then you can play with these numbers. Say center one is instead of uh, 0.5 kilograms, it is one kilogram. And then you can see how that affects your um, margin. All right, let's go back to our presentation. All right, so in summary, uh, creating a budget allows you to create a system to meet the needs of that system. All right, so you account for the restrictions in both the power and uh, the mass of the system. You need to build as complete and realistic a budget as possible because you want to compensate for everything. So you include contingency that really captures the uncertainty and the power and the mass needs in individual components. Uh, you need to size the battery so the margin is roughly 25 to 30 percent. So that provides the mass and the cost of the battery. So the sizing of the battery provides the mass and the cost of the battery, which then can be used in other budgets like a mass budget and a, um, uh, an actual budget, money budget. Too little margin doesn't allow changes, while too much margin wastes resources. So that's why you're aiming for roughly 30% there. And then you size the mass so that, so that the margin is also roughly about 25 to 30%. If it's too little, like if you're only down at 10% margin, um, then you need to shed some of the mass and make some really hard decisions about which things you get rid of. If it's too much, like you have 100% margin, uh, then you really need to explain why. And so some examples of that might be, you know, we're designing something that's really simple because we want to keep it simple. Um, and simplicity actually allows us to be really good. And then maybe, you know, what you're going to do is actually offer like a secondary payload. So we're going to do one thing, but then somebody else could come along and add some mass and do their own thing. So that is a design that um, many uh, satellites use um, when they're launching on a rocket. and They don't take up all of the mass of that rocket. So hopefully this gives you enough information that you can download um, the different spreadsheets and start playing with that. Get a good start on your project. Thank you.